He has hated... Well, no, he's admitted that he hates modern musicals. Uh, and Damon Albarn's latest project is curiouser and curiouser. <laughs> he's, well, he's already, now, he's he's already re correcting He's retracting you. already. Yeah, no, no, I mean, what, what did you say about musicals? No, I, I, I said that there are certain aspects about modern musical which have... You know, I, I grew up on, on the greats. You know, I, yes. I, when I was at school, I did Guys and Dolls, West Side Story, Oliver. And you can't really compare a lot of musicals now. I mean, you know, I have gr great... Uh, respect for anyone who gets makes a successful musical because yeah. it's really difficult and you've got to have a fantastic right. story. And you're saying that because there's pressure on you now, <laughs> isn't there? No, I'm not trying to qualify that. There are aspects which I'm I'm not are not to my taste, but I never said I hate All modern right. musicals. Okay. Just just, just, for the, just for the record. But what is for sure is that the Blur frontman has co-written a musical version of Alice in Wonderland that takes a trip down a modern-day rabbit hole. It's catchily called uh, Wonder Dotland, and uh, it features characters like the March Hare and the Mad Hatter, but reimagines Lewis Carroll's creations in the digital age. In a moment, we will talk to Damon again, and Lois Chimimba, is that right, Lois? Yes. Um, who is uh, stars as Alice in the musical. First, though, guys, we're going to have a look at it. <laughs> Here again, along with Lois, do you remember who plays Alice in the musical? That's, Morning, your, that's your avatar name. Your real name in your musical is Ali. So, explain how you come to have two names. Well, Ali's real name is Alice, it's just um, our parents and friends call her Ali. Um, but she effectively names her avatar Alice after herself, it's another aspect of her. Mm. Um, and, Damon, just explain to us the sort of um, the idea behind the story. It comes from Alice in Wonderland, but you've yeah. taken it a little bit further, haven't you? Well, yeah, I mean, but I sort of, for, for me, it was, it, 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 it was a story that obviously was a big part of my childhood and haunted me in many ways. In fact, I think, I think in, a, in, in some ways the, uh, the Duchess was sort of uh, part of my kind of nightmares. And the same for you, know, you Lloyd, you saying forward, as well. Moving forward, she, she yeah, was yeah. part of the architecture of, of... We all have a kind of uh, our nightmare and, and it's sort of... We, in, it's inhabited by different sort of things as we grow older, but that idea of arriving somewhere where nobody makes sense and, and the world's just really askew, mm. I, th I think, was kind of... I can kind of trace it back to, to Alice in Wonderland. So it's always, it's always been something I've sort of uh, had a strange relationship with. Mm. Um, you've taken it um, into... The Wonderland that you found is a sort of digital Wonderland, isn't it? Well, yeah, it was sort of... How, where is the rabbit hole these days? I mean, I started quite randomly. I, I went to North Korea because I thought that might be a good rabbit hole, and, and, it, and it was. I mean, it, it, it turned out that it, it, it had no relationship to what what we've done yes. with Wonder Dot Land. But, um, yeah, I needed to find a rabbit hole. And then we started, started talking with, with Rufus, the director, uh, and I think it just became really obvious that the telephone uh, was the rabbit hole. Mm. You know, the internet was very obviously the modern-day portal. Uh, and we've all got three of us, the, um, the writer, Moira... Rufus and myself, we've all got teenage children, and it was like, well, this is our opportunity to sort of explore how we feel about their relationship with, with, with the internet and social media and, and how we, as a sort of a generation who grew up before it, and I think... 
We yeah, which is an interesting concept. How does how do you manage that? This is a generation that didn't. Yeah, yes. yeah. Had it all their life. How do you manage that transformation on stage, going from from well, what is presented presumably as, as real life to the digital other world? Um, we have really exciting AV and video projections, which help with our digital world as well as a mixture of live and digital music. Um, the characters that we know and love from Alice in Wonderland, they are more from the digital world. and So it's quite clear, I think, in the story when we are in real life for Ali yes. and when we're in this video game. Um, but they do start to collide and the characters and the music all sort of intertwine for it all to mix up. Mm. Yeah. Is, is, it quite dark? is it quite dark? Is that what, what you found in, in going down the rabbit hole, as it's, it were? It's... It is dark, but it's in a, in a family entertainment way. I mean, for me, I've written two things for the, for the theatre beforehand, and I did Monkey, which I suppose was was almost exclusively for for kids. It was like had a lot of circus in it, uh, and I did Doctor D, which was about a 17th century mystic and really way too esoteric for most people's taste, but I really enjoyed so, making it. But this one is a proper musical. This is a musical. It, it, it combines. I mean, I've had a love since childhood of music hall, the tradition. I've kind of sort of put, been a student of it all my life. And, uh, but it's also got this very strong electronic element. So it's kind of an electro music hall Is there a lot of musical. Do you feel a lot of pressure on you to succeed with this one when, when you have been? I mean, in the paper certainly the other day, critical of modern musicals. And certainly yeah, the paper question is, is saying well, being, you're dismissive of the garbage of modern musical theatre. That's in quotes, by the way, that word garbage. Yes, well, <laughs> I've seen a lot of things in quotes that weren't necessary. You didn't, so, but... I, I prob... Oh, God, I'm... I, I, I probably said that, and it's been taken out of context, <laughs> and now it's like, that's what I think about all yeah. modern yeah. musicals, and that's rubbish. I don't, I don't, but do I you don't feel that it. when you are putting on a new musical... Like I, reali I realise how difficult it is to put okay. on a, a, a modern musical and it is very easy to fail and really it's easy not to kind of, to, you know, to get to the end and ca carry the audience with the story but I think, I, I don't think we have a problem with that. I mean, we've got, it's been an amazing process uh, and it's been really workshopped with everyone in the cast so I think everyone feels a sense of uh, it's their it's their project as well, which is really. Yeah, I feel really fantastic. conscious for you, Lois, sitting here. So we're talking about the pressure on, on Damon, but all, also obviously yeah. on you as uh, well. But you're looking forward to it? Yes, it's amazing. We had our, our first preview last night, and things are still chaos, but um, it's really really exciting. How are you? How do you deal with the chaos? Because sometimes chaos can be kind of quite a sort of uh, enlivening thing, can't it? Yeah, I, it fluctuates from going, oh my god, I can't believe this is happening, to just taking a, a look around you, calming down, and thinking we're okay, we know what we're doing. Enough. And the characters, have, how do you update the characters like Tweedledum and, and Tweedledee, that sort of thing? Uh, well, I think they, that was the easiest thing for me was write, writing songs for them and for the cat and for the caterpillar. The caterpillar in particular was like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's it's one of those things that it's just great to do if you get the chance to write for that character because he's so sort of he's so linked to. I mean, that in in a way he's sort of he's a sort of uh, a mascot for counterculture, isn't he? Really, a sort of very early prototype of the sixties. Um, how do you fit all of this in with, you know, playing and all the rest of it? How does it all fit? How does it all fit? Yeah. Uh, well... Between the two. Get up early, you know. Oh, you keep see, myself it's just so not rock and roll, isn't it? Eat porridge. <laughs> Brilliant. Yoga. Oh, anything else? Yes, that's fine. Uh, the inter is Same the, as what we do here. And it's starting at the International Manchester Festival uh, uh, well, very shortly. Mm -hmm. And then after that... Is where do you take it? Um, at Christmas time, we're at the Olivier in the National Theatre in London, in the oh, South I Bank. Know. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, that sounds very exciting. It's really exciting. Yeah. And, you know, I think last night, the first preview discovered that it, it's really funny. I mean, it's hilarious, yeah. isn't it? It's hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's funny. I hope it's got some decent tunes <laughs> in it. Lois is wonderful. I mean, they're just, it's just... It's, it's proper family entertainment. Good luck. Yeah, it's good, good fun. Good luck with it. Good Thank luck, you very much. Thank you. And uh, Wonder Dotland opens at the Manchester International Festival this Thursday, plays at the National Theatre in London in November.